What's good, Bears fans? Harrison Graham here from Chat Sports. We are live once again here on Chicago Bears now, both on YouTube and on Rumble. Appreciate you guys rocking and rolling with us, regardless of where you guys are watching from. Appreciate everybody waiting in the live chat. The FGBs have been flowing already. That is fantastic. We'll start today's show like we normally do with our live streams. We'll let the audience build up, get the chat going, get the chat rate up, and then we'll get into the latest news and rumors coming up here in about seven or eight minutes. Shout out your city. Let us know where you guys are watching from, and I'll give you guys some shout outs as I already always do. Got over 120 people watching live. That is fantastic. Wesley says, yeah, Harrison Graham. What's good, Wesley? Uh, Q Carrito is in Houston. Uh, Q actually going to Houston uh, later this month for one night, then going to Galveston for Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Prince is in uh, Green Bay, who hope you're a Bears fan representing. Uh, Reynoso is in South Bend, Indiana. Aaron in Centennial, Colorado. Chris in Plano, Texas, just down the road from us. Tyler Smith in Toledo. We got Where Goes One in Dayton, uh, the Gabe in Dayton as well. We got Mark in Orlando, West Side Chicago from Shadow, Dirty South from J Jonathan, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina from Leroy, we got Yachton, South Dakota, Dublin, FGB from Allen. What's good, Allen? Always watching our shows. Daniel in Chicago, Kevin in Seattle, Jonathan in Durham, South Country, Iowa, Daniel's in Chi Town. We got Baylor in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Milwaukee is where Matthew's watching. Oh, we got someone in Croatia, can't pronounce that city, Jossip. Is that um, Osijek? O Osijek? Let me know. That's probably way off. Got a Tucson, Arizona representing. That's producer Jack's hometown as he's rocking with us. Appreciate that, Lupe. Uh, we got Jeff in Atlanta. We got uh, Justin out in Kentucky. Lawrence in Myrtle Beach. Where's the fireball? Don't have any, but if y'all start dropping 50 pieces, then we'll get some out, I guess. Uh, we got uh, Aaron in Waterloo. Uh, LaPriar, Texas from Alex. We got Dre in Hammond, Indiana. De uh, Devon in Japan. Nashville, Indiana as well from Jeff. You guys representing all over the globe. That's why Bears fans are the best. Name a player that the Bears should go out and trade for. We'll take a look at some trade targets coming up in just a little bit here in about 30 minutes or so. So name a player that the Bears should go out and trade for. Get a couple of shout-outs here, and then we'll uh, keep it moving. Tim Tebow, uh, he's – you don't want Timmy T. He can't block, he can't throw, he can't catch, he can't do much. Uh, Cooper Cup, DK, uh, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, those would all be fun. Uh, someone says Tariq Cohen, who's a free agent. We'll talk Tariq Cohen. Uh, tough break once again for him. Miami from fishing, we got uh, Caden saying Calvin Ridley. Maybe next offseason after he serves a suspension. Logan says Indomitian Sue. He's a free agent. You could just sign him. Travis is Terry McLaurin. Uh, sign Emmanuel Sanders from Blake. Mike Thomas from Face. Calvin Ridley, Sanders, Derek Henry. Ooh, that'd be fun. Terry McLaurin. Uh, Tariq never coming back. Yeah, you know, his playing days might be over. Uh, we'll explain later on. Predict the Bears' record in the 2022 season. Let's hear it. 17 games. What's the Bears' record going to be? Nick Wright of Fox Sports surprised some folks with his Bears' record prediction. We'll break that down during our news and rumors portion as well. So predict the Bears' record. Travis says 11 and 6, 10 and 7 from Rom, 17 and 0 from Maxwell, 4 and 13 from B Mays. We got 8 and 9 from Scrim. A lot of 10 and 7s, including Prince, Chi Town, and Bob saying 10 and 7. Someone says Quentin Nelson. That'd be nice, Alan Mack. That'd be real nice. 9 and 8 from Wesley, 5 and 12 from Jason. Williams says 7 and 10. Blake says 7 and 10. 6 and 11 from Aaron. Mark is at 6 and 11. John says 11 and 6. Let's ride. Uh, 10 and 7 from. Uh, Jersim, we got Tyler Smith saying nine and eight, nine and eight sneak in the wild card game. That'd be an awesome season. Like if the Bears, I keep saying, it, if the Bears do what Philly did last year in terms of a win loss standpoint uh, and sneak in, that would be great. The Gabe says ten and seven, thirteen and three is impossible. Ivory thirteen and four, fourteen and three. Uh, would have to be the guest. Nine and eight from Shaquille, and we got FGBs already coming in in the chat. So why not spam it, FGB? FGB, FGB. You guys know what to do. Type FGB in the chat uh, because uh, we don't like the Packers here at Bears now because uh, we're real ones. Can't be liking the Packers in this chat. Scott says FGB. Willie says it. 
Tyler, Matthew, Pat. We got uh, the Gabe, Caden, Tyler, Tyrone. Uh, we got Alan Mack, Joey in the chat. Uh, Casey, Tyler, Ivory, Chi Town. He's saying forget Green Bay. That's the that's the PG rated version. Shaq, Heidi, Joey, uh, Shadow in the chat. Jake saying F A R as well. Hey, that's acceptable. The Lemure, Buddy, Leroy, Cam I G L. FGB in the chat. Get it flowing. Get it going right now. How old are you? That is the pinned uh, poll. Sorry, the poll question here on Bears Now. I said over or under 30. So if you don't want to give me your actual age, it's all good. Just type O for over 30, U for under 30. But if you want to give me your actual age, that's cool too. I'm 28 years old. Uh, Producer Jack is 23, almost 24. Uh, So, uh, you know... That's, th- that's our age. We're just curious. Curious what the demographics we're dealing with here. Uh, Caden says 23. Javen says 22. Tyler says 13. Jonathan says 37. Danny's 33. Prince and 19. James is 30. I see that super chat, B. Ryan. It's a good question, so we're going to hit it here in our first mailbag. Thank you for the $5, uh, my friend. 56, Die Hard Bear from Chi-Town. Julian's 29. Jim is 53. Caden is 18. Willie Sanders is 46. So appreciate all of you for rocking and rolling with us uh, here on today's show. Uh, no age is a problem whatsoever. So uh, not a big deal. Uh, we're just curious. Just absolutely curious. All right. If you're ready for the real show to start, like the video, hit that thumbs up icon. Let's cross 100 likes. We got over 300 people watching already during our audience build up portion. Uh, 52 from John Williams. Uh, Alan Mack, you're 39, almost 40. That's a big one. It's a big one. Octane says he's 93. That's impressive that you're on YouTube at 93. It's impressive that you're alive at 93, if that is the truth. B. Ryan is 21, bottoms up. Uh, appreciate you guys. Like the video, 18 likes away from 100, and we'll get this party started here on Chicago Bears now. So appreciate that. Very, very much. Hit that thumbs up icon. Let me see. Just got a notification. Hang on one sec, folks. Okay. No big deal. All right. 99 likes, one more, and we are good to go. Appreciate that. Here's what's coming up on today's live edition of Chicago Bears Now. The latest news and rumors, including uh, a couple nuggets from OTA, so stay tuned for that. Two live mailbags, so use hashtag Bears or Super Chat. Get your questions in. We'll answer as many as we can. Five Bears trade targets uh, that Ryan Poles could consider before the NFL season. And then also, and I'll put this link uh, in the live chat for you guys, exclusive Bears Now call-in show. At the end of our YouTube stream at about 4 o'clock Central, we'll go live on call-in for a bonus 30, 40 minutes there. Answer all your questions. We've been telling you about call-in. So uh, subscribe with the link that's in the live chat and uh, join us uh, after YouTube Live, and we will uh, answer all of your questions. It's your opportunity to call me directly uh, and ask me your questions. I've had fun doing it. Hope you guys have as well. Chatsports.com slash Bears Colin. All that coming up here in the next hour plus here on Bears Now. Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am your host, Harrison Graham. Appreciate you guys for clicking on this video here on a Tuesday. We're back with the latest news and rumors. We'll get to some OTA stuff in just a little bit, including hype around this rookie, so stay tuned for that. But first, trivia time here on Bears Now. When was the last season the Bears swept the Packers like what year was it when the Bears last swept Green Bay aka won both regular season matchups with the Packers it's been a while let us know stay tuned until the end of or this segment or later on could happen at any point stay tuned for the answer when was the last season that the Bears swept the Green Bay Packers okay uh, let's get with story number one are the Bears gonna make the playoffs well Fox Sports' Nick Wright hopped on First Things First today, the show he uh, hosts uh, for Fox Sports, and said the Bears are going 11-6. He predicted that would be second in the NFC North, uh, also good for a wild card berth. Uh, he has Green Bay at 12-5. and five. Uh, Now, most national commentators are down on the Bears. I've seen 3-14s, and 5-12s, 4-13s, 6-11, and 7-10. And and Nick Wright having the Bears going 11-6. and six. 
I'd say that's a pretty positive outlook. Here's how he has the NFC North playing out. Packers winning the division again at 12-5. and five. Bears sitting there at 11-6. and six. Eight and nine are the Vikings, which, by the way, he actually has Minnesota sneaking into the playoffs as well at eight and nine as that number seven seed. And then Detroit down at six and 11. Three NFC North teams making the playoffs, according to Nick Wright, which, quite frankly, I think would surprise a lot of people. I think the, uh, you know, the national media and a lot of folks out there view the NFC North as a one, maybe two team division between Green Bay and then maybe Minnesota. Not a lot of people are high on the Bears or the Lions, uh, but uh, Nick Wright, very high on the Bears. He's a Justin Fields believer, as am I. I wouldn't go as far as 11-6, and six, but the schedule isn't that crazy difficult as it is the second easiest schedule in the NFL, at least on paper. That's based on opponent win percentage from last year. Obviously, things change. The draft, free agency, new coaching staff. So teams that weren't good last year could be better this year. Teams that were good last year may not be as good this year, but on paper, based on last season, Bears have the second easiest schedule in the NFL. I'll tell you this. It's an easier schedule than last year. That I can promise you. So fill in the blank. Nick Wright says 11, but what do you say? The Bears will win blank games in 2022. And I mean the 2022 season. So that counts the January game. That's technically in 2023, but it's this upcoming season. 17 games. The Bears will win blank games this year. I want to know from you guys down in the comment section. Now, today's show is also being published on Rumble, and you guys should follow us there. I get DMs all the time like, hey, how can I help support Bears now? Uh, what are other ways we can help support? And I give you guys a lot of answers. One of those answers is follow us on Rumble because we're trying to grow over there. If we grow over there, we're growing as a show as a whole, and it allows us to do more content for you guys, free uncensored content from us and other content creators out there, sports, news, politics, tech, business, whatever your flavor is, lots of good stuff on Rumble. Uh, cool feature on their app as well, if you download the app on your phone uh, and you listen on mobile devices, you can listen to our videos uh, while having other apps open. Unless you have YouTube Premium, you can't do that on YouTube. When you open Twitter, a text that comes in, whatever, the video pauses. Uh, you can't keep listening. So on Rumble, you can, and it is free. Plus, some occasional Bears bonus videos for you guys. Rumble.com slash Bears now. That is a place to follow us and support the channel. Okay, let's get to the sad news of the show before we get to some OTA news and notes. And uh, uh, I should say a uh, running back uh, formerly of the Bears, uh, Tariq Cohen. Looks like he's injured again. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the video. Tough situation. So he went on Instagram Live, kind of leaned up his phone against a wall or something at this gym he was working out at. And uh, I'm sure you guys have seen these type of workouts before. It's like a little ladder on the ground. And, you know, he's jogging forward. And then as he started jogging back – you hear this popping noise, and he reaches back for his leg and falls down. <sighs> it doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good. Lots of speculation, which we won't do that. But I will say, when players reach back like that, it's a calf or an Achilles usually. The pop was bad. <sighs> I feel terrible for him, man. I feel terrible for Tariq Cohen. It has been a very tough stretch for this guy. Which, by the way, one of the most enjoyable guys, by all accounts, in the NFL. This is a happy, go fun guy. And his past two years, I mean, you find me someone who's gone through more. Torres ACL and MCL. With that same injury, he fractured his tibial plateau, which he revealed in his Players Tribune article last week. He's had two brothers pass away in the past two years, and not necessarily expected deaths either, like things that shocked the family. Uh, injury setbacks led to his release. He failed the physical. Ryan Poles had to cut him loose. And now he's suffered an apparent new injury to his left leg. You find me someone who's dealt with more. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns has lost a lot of family members the last couple of years, but you combine the personal demons with his brothers passing away, the injuries he's had to deal with, getting cut by the Bears, a fan base that loves him. And by the way, that was not necessarily the wrong move by Ryan Poles. The guy can't stay healthy. It's just brutal. I feel for the guy, Tariq. If somehow you're watching this, we're with you. Bears fans are behind you. Uh, it's just – it's terrible, man. It's absolutely terrible, and I wish you a speedy recovery. Hopefully it's not a serious injury. But if it is, uh, we wish you the best. Show Tariq some love if you're watching – uh, live right now or uh, on YouTube or Rumble. Uh, after the fact, type 29 in the comments. It's the least we can do to support Tariq Cohen, one of my favorite Bears of all time, a fun player, a fun personality. I hope he gets back into the league and at least can find some peace and happiness because 
Uh, when he wrote that letter to the Players' Tribune, you could feel that emotion. And now with this latest apparent injury, it's tough, man. Get the 29s going down in the comment section. All right, let's try and flip the mood around. Let's get to OTAs. Uh, two OTA practices are in the books. Kyler Gordon hype. Matt Eberflus met with the media after practice today and said, quote, Gordon has been, quote, lighting it up through three days of OTA practices, which, number one, you absolutely love to see it. Uh, the fact that he named him specifically and said he's lighting it up, uh, I think is significant. And I told you guys on Monday's video, these practices are important because it's a new regime. You got a lot of rookies. You need to get everything you can out of these workouts if you are the Bears. And look, if Gordon lives up to the billing, we know, at least we have a pretty good idea what Jalen Johnson is and what he's all about. If Tavon Young can stay healthy, he's a good nickel. You got Thomas Graham and Kendall Vilder. Duke Shelley has some depth options. This could be a fun CB unit. And Kyler Gordon, he's got the traits. He had the production last year. He's a freak athlete. And he's already standing out at Bears practices. This secondary has potential to be really good and really fun. Jaquan Brisker at safety as well. I think Eddie Jackson could be a prime bounce back candidate. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. It's two OTA practices, but uh, after everyone freaked out when he had cramps during rookie minicamp, Kyler Gordon's ready to go, and he's lighting it up, according to Matt Eberflus. Now, who's going to have more interceptions this year at the quarterback position? If you think it's going to be Jalen Johnson, type JJ. If you think it's going to be Kyler Gordon, type KG, I hope they both have a ton because that's only going to be good things for the Chicago Bears. Get to some roster news here on Bears now. Uh, the Bears tweeted this out themselves earlier this morning. We have signed tackle Sean Coleman and waived punter Ryan Winslow. Uh, that happened earlier today, uh, which is uh, an interesting note for a couple reasons. One, I heard the name Sean Coleman. I was like, Sean Coleman, I know that name. Well, he actually started 16 games in 2017 for the Cleveland Browns. The problem is... We have not seen him play in the NFL since because he's had numerous injuries. He's opted out in 2020 for COVID. He's bounced around since then, so he has not played in a game since the 2017 season. So, you know, reclamation project maybe. Who knows? I don't view this as a guy who's necessarily going to compete for a roster spot, but you never know. Uh, the more significant one is actually around the punter. So with Winslow being released – I think you've got your starting punter. I think it's the guy you drafted in the seventh round, Trenton Gill, who averaged 45 yards a punt uh, last year for North Carolina State. Looks like he's going to be the guy who replaces Pat O'Donnell, who, of course, uh, signed with the Packers in free agency. So, you know, that's somewhat significant. You're going to have a new uh, starting punter this year, which we knew, but it does appear that it's going to be the rookie, at least at this point in time. We'll see if they bring in someone else for competition, but maybe they like what they've seen enough already, and they're just going to go ahead and roll with Trenton Gill. All right, answer to the trivia question. The last time the Bears swept the Packers was 2007. Kind of depressing when you think about it, if we're being completely honest. Uh, hopefully this is the year that uh, it happens once again because the Packers have done it numerous times since that season. Congrats to everyone who answered 2007. And if not, we'll play trivia again soon because I think it's a fun thing to do with you guys on occasional episodes. All right, Bears fans, that is our news and rumors portion. But if you have any questions around OTAs or et cetera, sure, we'll have mailbacks coming up. But also, we're going to go live on call-in today after YouTube live ends, which will be around 4 o'clock Central time. Uh, so subscribe right now, chatsports.com slash Bears call -in. I got my guy Marshall Green peppering the live chat uh, with uh, the link uh, to the call-in room, as they call it. You know how they call it Twitter spaces. Call-in room is what they call it, and uh, – you hop in the room and uh, you join the caller queue and uh, you can I pod you up and we answer all your questions. It's a whole lot of fun. I want to hear from you guys personally, vo vocally. I want to hear you guys uh, ask me questions. So chatsports.com slash Bears calling. That is the place to join our show. Also, I promised you guys on Monday that I would give new call-in subscribers some shout-outs. So sub now if you want to shout-out later in our call-in live. But here are the news. Uh, call-in subscribers that we got uh, from yesterday. Tyler Van Bree, Bradley Burke, Bill McGinn, Peyton uh, Burwanger. We got Jacob Unit, uh, Eric Snare, Joey Savage, Tyler O'Donnell, and Willie Gildart 
all subscribing to Bears Now on Colin. We appreciate it. And uh, if you subscribe before our YouTube live ends, uh, A, join us at 4 Central, and B, we'll give you guys some more shout-outs as well. All right, mailbag coming up here on Bears Now, hashtag Bears or Super Chat, to get your questions answered live here on the show. Those are the two ways to get on the show. We have a, super, a couple of Super Chats we'll kick things off with, and uh, uh, Producer Jack uh, will find more questions uh, from Super Chatters or folks using hashtag bear so appreciate you guys for submitting all of your questions we'll jump into them right now it's mailbag time here on chicago bears now i am harrison graham your host as always appreciate you guys for rocking and rolling with us and for submitting your questions let's start with some super chats here we got b ryan gaming how are people going or giving up on fields when people like danny dimes and others are still starting it is pretty telling and yeah, comical as producer Jack says in my ear that you would quit on a quarterback after a year who when he missed some time with injuries he was uh, playing for a staff that got fired look if he's terrible this year let's revisit it next offseason uh, but if he shows even slight improvement I'm giving him through next year too you got to give this guy every chance to be the starting guy yeah Daniel Jones is still starting in the NFL guys like Let's give Justin Fields an opportunity uh, to show that he can be the guy for the Bears. James Thomas, how do American NFL fans feel about games being played in the UK? Uh, James, first of all, welcome if you are uh, over in uh, Europe somewhere. Uh, appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, I think for the most part, it's pretty well received. I mean, uh, fans understand that the NFL is trying to become a global sport. Uh, those arena or those stadiums and arenas fill up uh, pretty well when uh, games are over there. There's a reason they're going to Germany now, Spain in the future as well. They play in Mexico City. Uh, it, it's smart by the NFL. And honestly, for us football junkies, it's kind of nice because then you have football literally all day. You can get up and uh, eat some breakfast and uh, watch football at 7 a.m. So uh, I like it. I'm a fan of it. I'd love to go to a, Europe for an NFL game sometime. I think it'd be really cool. Jason Howard, appreciate the $5. No question, just love the content here on Chat Sports and wanted to say thank you once again. Jason, you're the re you people like you are the reason why I do it. Uh, most of you guys are positive, even for the ones who aren't a huge fan of me or aren't always positive, you know, bring some negative energy. That's okay, too. I do it for the people. That's what we're about. Uh, if you love this show, if you love the interaction, subscribe. I think we're the most interactive Bears channel here on YouTube. Big Bobby, should the Bears sign Odell Beckham Jr.? I haven't had an OBJ question in a while. So uh, the answer is maybe. Uh, you know, he's still recovering from that ACL. Uh, played in 12 games last year with the Rams. Thought he played pretty well. Seven touchdowns, uh, 593 yards. I think this includes playoff stats, by the way, uh, as well. I thought he looked really good in the playoffs before suffering that injury. Um, we'll see when he returns. I'm open to it if the price is fairly cheap, but if he's going to miss half the season, then obviously you can't pay him that much. What do you guys think? Should the Bears sign OBJ? Type Y for yes, type N for no. If I know he's fully healthy, then hell yeah. If not, probably makes sense for him to sign with a bigger contender. Master Wu sends in $5. Ask a question next time, Master Wu, but we appreciate it. Alan Mack, hashtag Bears, with all the cap room we have for next year, we go for DK Metcalf, Quentin Nelson, re-sign Roquan Smith. Uh, doable if they don't re-sign with their teams? Sure, if those guys hit the open market, then yeah, they're, it's absolutely doable. Now, I don't expect Metcalf to become available. I really don't expect uh, Quentin Nelson to uh, become available uh, either. You're talking about the best guard in football, and they just committed to Matt Ryan. Uh, I do think Roquan Smith is going to get signed to a new deal, hopefully before next offseason. But, uh, yes, in theory, Alan, the Bears are going to have a lot of money to go make some moves. So, uh, if they want to swing big, if some of these big-name free agents become available, uh, I think it's a possibility that that could happen. Bradley says, bring back Akeem Hicks. Yeah, we talked about this on a mailbag last week. Um, a lot of you guys seem on board. I'm on board if the price is right. Kind of surprised he's still unsigned, if I'm being honest with you. So, if he wants to come back to Chicago for three, three and a half mil or something like that, I'm in. Bring him back. Steven says, sign Cole Beasley. I'd be open to it. Um, You know, he didn't play as well last year. Obviously, I I won't speak to how much it was a distraction for Buffalo because we don't know, but obviously uh, people didn't like his, how vocal he was about his vaccine stance. 
I don't really care about it, but it does lead to extra questions that teams have to deal with. And what do teams not like? Distractions. They, they don't. And fair or not, he was a distraction for Buffalo last year at times. Uh, but when he's healthy, he's a good slot receiver. I'd be open to it. He's still a good player. He's not what he was three years ago, but – Could he catch 50 balls for you? I think it's a possibility. Be sure to follow us here on Rumble as we are trying to get to 700 followers. We're at 688 right now. We only need 12 more. So help us out. Give us a follow on Rumble. Rumble.com slash Bears now. That is Rumble.com slash Bears now. Hit that follow or subscribe button. If you're on uh, your laptop, it'll say subscribe. But if you're on your phone, it should say follow. Uh, So help us out. Rumble.com slash Bears now. More content here from the channel. Master Wu 28 out of all the new players on the roster. Appreciate the super chat, by the way. Uh, thus far, who do you think makes the most impact? Out of all the new players, uh, I'm going to say Byron Pringle and or some of the rookies. Honest, actually, hot take, Lucas Patrick could have a huge impact. That center quarterback relationship is important. I think he'll be much better than Sam Mustafer. So I think he'll have an impact. Pringle, and then I think Gordon Brisker and Bayless Jones will all be solid players. So I think from that grouping of players, those guys will have a big impact. Tavon Young could have an impact as well. Uh, it's hard to pick one guy. Not I wouldn't say one guy stands out, but there's a few names. Ice Swallow. Good one. Do the Bears have the worst wide receiver core? Uh, is this, this has to be Chugs, doesn't it? Um, I don't think it's the worst, actually. Is it great? No. Is it even good? Pro- it's not good. It's average. Maybe it below average. But I think Darnell Mooney's a really good player. I think Pringle's underrated. Uh, and if Valus Jones is who the Bears think he can be, then, then it's like, okay, if those three players are good, yeah, maybe the depth isn't great. But I like Tajay Sharp as a depth guy. I think Equinemius St. Brown as a wide receiver four or five is fine. I don't think he's a three. Uh, you know, David Moore's a competition. You know, you've got Daz Newsome. If, if one or two of those guys emerge as decent depth pieces, I don't think it's as bad as it looks. Alan Melendez, will the Valus Jones hype be warranted? Well, we won't know until the season starts, will we? <laughs> um, uh, who knows? I, I think – He's got flashy potential. He's got good speed. He can make people miss in open space. Uh, He's physical like a running back. He's a good return specialist. So there's reasons to be excited. Now he's got to prove it in the offseason, training camp, preseason, and on into the season. I think there's a chance, but there's also a chance he's not that good. We have to see him play some football first. Uh, Okay, Bears fans, especially those that live in or around the Chicago area, Name a pizza joint that you don't like in Chicago. I've heard about all the places you do like. We know about, you know, Luminati's and all the big ones. But name one you don't like. I want to know because I'm putting a list together of good places and not good places. So let me know which pizza joints or joint, one or more. Uh, and, you know, if you like other joints, that's, uh, that's your choice. <laughs> but let us know which ones do you not like in Chicago. Joe Chavez, seems like the front office is rolling with what they have in the wide receiver room. Yeah, I mean, you signed Tajay Sharp and Dante Pettis. Kind of feels that way, right? Would I like them to add another at least big-ish name, a top, a number two, number three type? I would, but, you know, it doesn't seem like they're going to. So, I'll say this. Ryan Poles, this front office, has created a ton of competition at wide receiver. Hopefully that brings out the best in a couple of these uh, guys deeper on the depth chart. Steven with the super chat. Appreciate that. So what is going to happen with Larry Ogunjobi? I don't know. He visited with the Jets for two days. Hasn't signed as of yet. Obviously his contract fell through with the Bears due to that failed physical. I don't know if he's passed a physical yet for a team. Who knows? He's going to play football somewhere, I assume, this year. But he remains unsigned. The longer that's the case... Makes me wonder if the Bears could still sign him. We'll have to wait and see. Quinn for Defense Player of the Year. Or sign Will Fuller or Indomitian Sue. If I had to rank them, it's tough. I like I, I like the idea of signing both. Sue's probably safer because he's been healthy and he's been productive the last couple of years. Uh, but I think Fuller's, Fuller's skill set uh, fits pretty well in this offense. So how about both? Why not? Caden Gunvaldson, do you think the coaching staff plans to help Justin Fields by running the ball three out of four plays? 
the Bears will not run the ball 75% of the time. No NFL team does that. Could it be more 50-50? On average, teams throw it 55 to 60% of the time. Uh, I think the Bears could be in that 50-50 range, uh, but a lot of it depends on how the game is dictated. If the Bears are playing from behind, they're going to have to throw the football more. So I think they want to be balanced. They want to get fields on the edge, set up play action. So, uh, yeah, I think they'll want to run the football, but not 75% of the time. No team does that. Appreciate all your questions. Again, if you would follow us on Rumble, that would be a huge help uh, as we post more videos over there, rumble.com slash bears. Now, uh, if you're watching on Rumble, just hit that follow button. We appreciate it. Rumble.com slash bears now. If you love the Bears, like the video. Pretty simple, right? If you're a Bears fan, if you're rolling with Chicago, like this video. Let's cross 200 likes here. We got almost 550 people watching live here on YouTube. We got a few people watching on Rumble as well. So drop a like, hit that like button. Uh, we got Ori on Rumble as well. He said 7-10 and 10 record for the Bears, so appreciate that. Uh, hit that thumbs up icon if you love the Chicago Bears. Uh, Steven... Uh, appreciate that question. Let's go ahead and flash that one now, uh, Jack, uh, from Steven. We'll hit that question here, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Thoughts on the new O-line signing, solid or depth? Depth competition, hasn't played since 2017. You're talking about Sean Coleman. Um, started 16 games for the Browns in 17, but had some injuries, and then kind of been in and out of the league, opted out in 2020 for COVID, tried to get with the team last year. So, you know, it's – 90-man roster edition, right? If he surprises, great. If not, no harm, no foul. Okay, uh, name a player the Bears should trade for, and then we'll hop into this segment here. So, appreciate that. B. Ryan Gaming and Lucas Prang. We'll get to those super chats uh, coming up in just a little bit. Name a player that you guys think the Bears should trade for, and then uh, we'll get this party started. So, let us know what you think. Tyler says DK Metcalf. Maxwell said he thought I was 40. 28, man. When I shave, I look like I'm 24. <laughs> so that's why I rock with the beard. I got a bit of a baby face under here, believe it or not. So uh, Tyler going with DK Metcalf. So, all right, here we go. Five trade targets coming up for the Chicago Bears. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Chicago Bears Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. On today's video, we're going to take a look at five trade targets that Ryan Poles could take a swing at before the NFL season starts. Now, I think coming out of the draft, coming out of rookie minicamp, uh, these are the biggest needs uh, for the Bears, in my opinion. I still think the top two are the same, although they might be done at receiver after adding Dante Pettis and Tajay Sharp. We'll see. Could depend on how guys perform this offseason at OTAs and mandatory minicamp. Obviously, offensive line, I still think left tackle, right guard's a big spot. Linebacker, you could add another guy there. Defensive tackle, you could add a piece or two. And then can't ever have enough edge rushers. So those are my five biggest needs for the Bears uh, moving on toward training camp. Okay, what's your biggest need for the Bears? One positional need that stands out compared to every other position. If you had to pick one spot, what is the Bears' biggest need? Okay, let's get to my five trade targets for the Chicago Bears. Uh, we'll focus on the top two needs in today's video. LaVisca Chenault Jr. from the Jacksonville Jaguars, who – he was rumored to be available during the NFL draft and after for the first wave of free agency when Jacksonville went out and signed Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. Uh, through two seasons, Chenault's been uh, pretty decent, over 1,200 yards and five touchdowns playing for the garbage Jags. Uh, when he was coming out of college, quite frankly, uh, his – player comp was kind of similar to what we're hoping Bayless Jones is, although Jones has more speed. Uh, this Bears offense could get really creative if they had Chenault uh, in addition to Bayless Jones. Chenault can line up in the backfield. He can be a returner. He can be a receiver. He can do a little bit of everything. Makes guys miss in space. He'll run you over. Uh, he's a fun, creative player. Now, he's had some injury issues in the past, especially in college, but if the Jags are open to moving on from him, I like Chenault. I think there's untapped potential there, and I think if the Bears are going to be this creative creative offense that we think they could be, I could be a fun little piece to add to this nucleus. If the Bears make a trade, we'll break it down. That's a reason to subscribe right now here on the channel, youtube.com slash Bears now. Hit that big red subscribe button, and we'll have you guys covered with more Bears news and rumors videos, but especially if the Bears make a trade, trust me, we'll break it down. 
All right, trade target number two. We've talked about Andre Dillard before from the Philadelphia Eagles. He's kind of their third offensive tackle, stuck behind a couple of quality starters uh, there in Philly uh, and has played primarily left tackle when he has played. And, hey, Bears can use a left tackle. Now, is it possible Larry Borum's better than Andre Dillard? I guess it's possible. Uh, we haven't seen Borum play left tackle uh, hardly at all in the NFL, uh, whereas Dillard has uh, played at least decently when he has played. But when I look at this Bears offensive line, I still look at left tackle and right guard as like, well, I don't know what we're going to get out of those two positions because I think it's very much up in the air. I think those are question marks. And, if you know, maybe Larry Borm's the guy. Maybe Sam Mustafer, Dakota Dozier, or one of these rookies is the guy at right guard. I'm not convinced of that, but – I could be wrong. You drafted four rookies on day three for a reason. Maybe one or two of them emerge as starters. Who knows? Uh, I'd feel better if they went out and got somebody. I'm not saying Andre Dillard is, you know, a superstar, but he's played above average when he's gotten to play in 340 snaps last year for the Eagles, primarily at left tackle. Overall, just under 70. That's a tick above average based on their grading system. Only gave up one sack. Uh, he's pretty solid when he's gotten to play. Plus, assistant GM Ian Cunningham should know about Andre Dillard. He was in the Philadelphia Eagles front office. So if you want a solid player who's played well when had opportunities, I kind of view him as like Ryan Bates when the Bears were trying to get him from Buffalo. Hasn't always played, doesn't have a ton of experience, but when he has played, he's played pretty well. Uh, now, sometimes guys play good in a pinch, and then you try to play them as a full-time starter, and they're not nearly as effective. Maybe that could be true with Dillard. Uh, but uh, we know for a fact that certain guys who have gotten to play aren't exactly the answer. Dakota Dozier is not an answer for an offensive line, in my opinion. We'll get to some more trade targets in a moment, but YouTube launched a new feature. And I know a lot of you guys are watching this show live, but if you're watching this on Wednesday or later, uh, you can actually super thanks on the show. Super chatting uh, is a popular feature on live shows. Uh, so YouTube added it to their videos on demand, which is just our standard daily videos that we publish. If you see on the photo, the fifth icon there after like, dislike, share, download, then it's super thanks. It's a heart. You click on that and you can donate slash uh, send in whatever message you want. Uh, $1 up to 100 bucks. You can ask me a question, whatever. It'll pop up in the comments, and uh, we'll shout you guys out. So if you want a shout-out, send us a super thanks on a video, and we'll shout you guys out in a future show. We appreciate all the support. Obviously, super thanks is not a requirement. We don't expect uh, all you guys uh, to be able to do that. But just know if you send in a super thanks, we feel the love, we feel the support, and it helps us grow uh, and add more resources to Bears Now because we have a lot of channels at Chat Sports. Uh, Bears Now is one of our bigger ones, but if we want to continue to grow, every little bit helps, so we greatly appreciate it. Let's do another receiver here. Andy Isabella, who might be a name you've forgotten about. He was a I think third, fourth round pick a few years ago in 2019. Really speedy guy. Ran a really good 40 out of UMass, and he caught people off guard uh, as he moved up draft boards. Now, a pre-draft report came out saying that Isabella was available via trade, and I assume that's still the case because the Cardinals did go out and trade for Marquise Brown to add to that offense. So I don't really know where Andy Isabella fits. I'll be honest, he's been kind of underwhelming through three seasons. He's only played in 36 games, has less than 500 yards, just three touchdowns, has showed some explosion when he's gotten opportunities, uh, but uh, not in a lot of opportunities have come. He's been used as a return man as well. Uh, so you'd have that addition, but the Bears do have a lot of options as a punt and or kick returner. What I would say to this is, sure, you could trade for him, throw a late pick. He might also get cut. And if he gets cut, then you could just sign him outright. Obviously, the difference there is you would have to compete with other teams, potentially claim him off the waiver wire. Uh, so keep that in mind. But Andy Isabella before the draft uh, was made available, according to reports. I'm going to assume that's still the case at this point in time. One more receiver, Jalen Rager. We've talked about him before as well out of Philadelphia. Like Isabella, uh, he was reportedly made or put on the trade block before the draft, uh, at least according to reports, some rumors that he was on the trade block. And, you know, it hasn't gone to plan for Jalen Rager, first-round pick out of my alma mater, TCU, so I'm a little biased here. I like Jalen Rager, but it just hasn't worked in the NFL. I thought he showed some promise as a rookie in just 11 games, battled some injuries, uh, but showed some explosion at 13 yards a catch, had 31 grabs for almost 400 yards and limited playing time. But then last year, lots of drops, uh, muffed 
multiple punts, seemed to lose his confidence. That fan base, which can be tough at times, got after him in Philly as well. The explosive plays disappeared at only nine yards a catch there. Did have two touchdowns, but just wasn't the same guy. Instead of ascending, he descended in year two, and that's something you don't want to see. But again, I'll say this with all these receivers we're talking about. You look at the depth chart. Think about this. You know Darnell Mooney and Byron Pringle are going to be on the team, as is Phelous Jones. After that, what do we really know? I think St. Brown will be on the team with a Getze connection and his size and frame. Very unproven over four or five NFL seasons. Daz Newsome, we don't know if he's bringing anything to the table. David Moore hasn't done much in the last couple of years. Tajay Sharp's a journeyman. Dante Pettis is a boss. Like, you hope a couple of these guys emerge, but Jalen Rager was a first-round pick two years ago. Like, you can't tell me he can't give you more than David Moore. <laughs> like, I just I, – I don't know. Like, I get that he's been bad. I think – uh, with a fresh start, that could benefit him. I'm certainly biased. I will flatly admit that. But you're telling me he's not worth a seventh-round pick, a sixth-round pick? Hell, trade a fifth. They send you a sixth and Rager back. Who says no? Like, you can't tell me he can't be a number five receiver for a team. And maybe show more because, again, we've seen some flashes, but he's in that bust category right now. He has not been good up to this point in his career. It's up to him to change that narrative. But maybe a fresh change of scenery, which we see in sports, could help him reach his potential. So pick a receiver. We've talked about three of them. Uh, I'm not crazy biased. I would pick Chenault over the other two. But let me know which you would pick. Type LS for LaVisca Chenault. Type AI, not for Allen Iverson, for Andy Isabella. Or type JR for Jalen Rager. I would rank him Chenault, Rager, than Isabella. Let me know which one you would pick down in the comments. All right, let's go back to offensive line here. I'm going to focus on the two key positions. Uh, like I said, that is Liam Eikenberg, who I liked him coming out of college at Notre Dame. Kind of struggled as a rookie last year for Miami, if I'm being honest. I think he started 16 of 17 games at left tackle. Uh, PFF graded him like in the 50s. He wasn't that good. Uh, but, you know, potential second-round pick, I believe he was. Um you know, he could be a guy you bring in for competition uh, at tackle or guard because that is something draft experts said uh, in that pre-2021 draft is that he's got that positional flexibility. He could play tackle or guard uh, for you. So maybe he's a guy you bring in for a late round pick and, uh, you know, you let him compete with some of these other rookies uh, and maybe he earns a starting job because he's got that potential. He was uh, on many mock drafts a first round guy for uh, the 2021 draft. I think he went in the second round, but did not look great as a rookie, uh, so keep that in mind. So there you go. My trade targets, some kind of under-the-radar guys to keep in mind as the 2022 NFL season uh, is closer and closer by the day. Uh, we're already almost in June. LaVisca Chenault, Andre Dillard, Andy Isabella, Jalen Rager, and Liam Eichenberg. Those are my trade targets for the Bears. Now name a player that you think the Bears should trade for. You're in charge. You're Ryan Poles. Who would you go out and trade for if you can get him? Let us know in the comments uh, of this video. Appreciate you guys for subscribing to the channel. We'll have videos every single day here on YouTube, youtube.com slash Bears Now. Let's continue to grow. We're closing in on 50,000 subs. Let's get there ASAP. Go ahead and subscribe today. All right. Uh, give me just a second here. <sighs> Mouth a little bit dry. Okay, one more mailbag to go, but once that ends, we're going to go live on the Colin app, which we've told you about over the last couple of weeks. It's it's basically Twitter Spaces on crack. Uh, it's Twitter Spaces meets podcasting. We do live episodes once per week. You guys get to call in, uh, hop in the caller queue. I pod you guys up. I answer your questions. We talk back and forth for 30, 45 minutes, and then afterwards we publish it as a podcast episode. So those of us who, those of you who couldn't join us live, uh, are able to listen to it later. But basically, it's a back and forth conversation type of app. I want to hear from all of you. Uh, interact with all of you. If you have personal questions uh, uh, for the Bears uh, that you feel are too long for YouTube Live, then uh, this is your opportunity. Or if you just want uh, to get your voice across, because I know that's what I like doing. I used to call them my favorite radio shows as a kid all the time. This is your chance to do that. Chatsports.com slash Bears Colin. Uh, I will put the link in the live chat for you guys uh, to join us. Uh, because we're going to go live over there here in just about 15 minutes. Uh, Chatsports.com slash Bears call in. Come join us. Let's have some fun. Let me see if we got any new subscribers from earlier, by the way. I can shout you guys out just real quick. Uh, Bear Down Smith has also 
uh, subscribe. We crossed 200 subscribers on Colin, so that is fantastic. All right, mailbag number two coming up. Hashtag Bears or Super Chat. Get your questions in. If there's any Super Chats to catch up on, we will hit those first. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Hashtag Bears or Super Chat. Before we answer all your questions on today's Chicago Bears mailbag, help us out. The road to 50,000 subscribers is well underway. We're almost at 48,000, less than 100 away. We need 2,000 and some change to get to 50,000. Can we get there before, I don't know, say Independence Day, July 4th? we got about a month and a half until then. I'm challenging all of you, youtube.com slash bears now, daily bears news rumors, live shows on Tuesdays, and a lot more. So go ahead and subscribe right now. Welcome in. It is mailbag time. I'm your host here on Chicago Bears Now, Harrison Graham. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Let's get to your questions right now. B. Ryan Gaming, personal opinion, I don't want a Ravens offense. I also do not want a Ravens offense. <laughs> um, uh, I, I know on our last mailbag, someone said, are the Bears going to run at three out of four plays? I don't view that being the case. I think it'll be a balanced attack. They'll run the football with that zone scheme, and they'll set up some play action, and Fields will do some drop back passing as well. I think uh, that's going to be how this goes. A lot of vertical passing also. Lucas Prang, you don't want to go to uh, Giordano's lose 100%. Okay, Lucas, I'll keep that in mind uh, when I send a list to my buddy who's going to Chicago later this month. Uh, if you guys don't know what Lucas is referencing, I asked you guys which pizza joint I don't or that you guys don't like in Chicago. So that's his opinion. A couple of places. I'll keep that in mind. Steven 3V, any good player contract expiring next offseason, including Bears? Well, uh, Roquan for the Bears, David Montgomery, those are the two names for the Bears to monitor. Uh, for other teams, DK, Debo, Terry McLaurin, but I expect most of those guys to uh, get new contracts. But there's always good free agents. I'd have to look at a larger list, but those are some names uh, to consider. Chi-Town 65, do you think the Bears will seriously consider keeping Akeem Hicks? Seriously, I don't know. I don't know what conversations are being had at Hallis Hall. I don't know how Ryan Poles views Akeem Hicks. I don't know how Akeem Hicks views the Bears at this point. Is he open to a return? Does he want a return? Uh, I would think that he'd be open to it because he's loved playing for the Bears. Um, it's hard to say. Two smoking Jays. I think it's possible, uh, especially the longer he remains unsigned. Johnny Jones, who will have a bigger impact this year, Byron Pringle or Valus Jones Jr.? And this is a good question. Um, I'll say this. If it's Valus Jones, I think that's a good sign because that means they've gotten the rookie involved. He's been a playmaker because I do think Pringle will be solid. I'm not saying he'll have – a thousand yards or anything like that, but I think Pringle could give you seven or eight hundred yards. He gave you five. He gave the Chiefs five fifty last year, and he was like their number four or five weapon on offense. He could be your number two or three weapon here behind Darnell Mooney, uh, maybe behind Bayless Jones. Obviously, David Montgomery too, but uh, we'll see where Cole Komet fits in. But he's your number two receiver right now. Uh, if it's Jones, it's a good sign. If it's Pringle, that's probably okay too. Hopefully, they're both productive. Who do you guys think will have the bigger impact this year? Type BP for Byron Pringle, type VJ for Valus Jones Jr. Pick a guy, bigger impact for the 2022 season, BP or VJ? Tyrone 80, sir, Tyrone R6. Why isn't Trey Lance from San Francisco getting any criticism from the national media, but Justin is getting killed? Remember when we got Trubisky and killed for, meanwhile, San Francisco stole a playoff team without a QB? Um... I'll answer kind of the first part of that. A couple reasons. One, I think the national media just feels like the Niners have a better team around Lance, which is true. They've got top three tight end in George Kittle. They've got Debo Samuel for now. Brandon Ayuk's a nice player. Kyle Shanahan's a proven play caller. Uh, whereas the Bears have uh, Luke Getze, who we like his potential, but we haven't seen him call plays. Uh, Darnell Mooney, Byron Pringle, and David Montgomery. Eh, that's a little less to work with. Oh, plus the Niners have a better offensive line. So – I think it's more of what, on paper, the Niners have around Lance. I think that's more of the narrative. I think also is the national media hasn't seen Lance play that much, whereas, you know, they could say, well, Fields didn't play that well last year if they're just box, whore hunt, uh, box score hunting, box whore hunting. Oh, no. That is not what I meant. Box score hunting uh, where his raw stats didn't look that good. So those could be a couple reasons why. <coughs> Excuse me one second. 
Ah, Georgia Rebel. Who can we pick up in the interior of the defensive line? Larry Okunjobi, Akeem Hicks, and Dominican Sue. Those are a couple of names. Um, there's a few other guys out there. I'm drawing a bit of a blank. Those are three guys I can think of right off the top of my head. Uh, I know I've talked about a couple other guys recently. Let me get back to you, but those are three guys. Betty DeBully, if you would choose three players to build around on the Bears, who would it be? Uh, probably, gosh, three. I'll say Justin Fields because I'm a believer in his, and if you don't pick him, then you're saying you don't have a quarterback. Uh, Roquan Smith and probably Darnell Mooney. Those would probably be the three. Um, if I knew Tevin Jenkins – was really good at tackle, I'd say him, but I don't know that to be the case. Um, I'm not. I like David Montgomery, but he's a running back. I like Jalen Johnson. There's other guys I would consider, but Fields, Roquan, and Darnell Mooney would probably be the first three I would pick. This is a good question. I'm curious what you guys think. Three players to build around. Let us know in the comments. Also, follow us on the Call In app. We've been telling you guys about Call In for a few weeks now. It's an audio social podcasting app. It's Twitter Spaces meets podcasting. We have weekly live shows where, uh, you know, you get a notification, you hop in there. We have a caller queue that you can request to talk to me. Uh, I pod you guys on, get through the calls, talk back and forth about the Bears or other NFL stuff, whatever you guys feel like talking about. Uh, for 30 or 45 minutes, it's a lot of fun. So subscribe, join us, chatsports.com slash Bears call in. Also, if you watch uh, on a uh, TV or a fire stick or whatever, uh, this is a QR code for Bears now on call. And if you just take a picture of this, snap it, it'll redirect you to the call-in page. You can download the app and subscribe to Bears Now. Go ahead and do so. Chatsports.com slash Bears Call-In. Uh, take a picture of the QR code. You'll be good to go. The Gabe, how about getting Jay, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba in the draft next season? How about yes? Uh, we've talked about this a couple times. Very open to it. I think he's a really good player. A lot of good receivers next year. Jordan Addison. Uh, you've got um, – uh, Boutte out of LSU. I like Quentin Johnston out of my alma mater, TCU. He's going to be better than Jalen Rager. Don't worry. No PTSD there. Um, there's a couple other guys. Marvin Mims out of Oklahoma is a good player. I think five, six, seven guys will probably go in the first round, and Bears, if they want to, uh, should pick one of them. Ice is back. I'm not going to finish it. Could the Bears still sign OBJ or Julio? If not, do they go wide receiver early in the draft next year? I'm kind of piggybacking on that last one. Definitely could go receiver early. Uh, and I, I think the second part isn't connected to the first part because if you sign OBJ or Julio, probably a one-year deal. So uh, they probably wouldn't be under contract for next season anyway. So the answer to all of it is yes, they could. Maxwell Ruchala, do you think Aaron Rodgers will play well this season? Probably because he's a pain in the ass, but he's really good at football. But um, look, no Devontae Adams. So I think that's a real thing that – we're going to be watching for, right? That's a huge storyline in the NFL. How does Aaron Rodgers play without Devontae Adams? We shall see. They drafted Christian Watson. Uh, a couple other guys, can't remember who they drafted, but uh, Alan Lazard's back. But let's be honest, that receiving core is not what it's been. So uh, curious to see how that plays out, but Rodgers is good for a reason. I'm sure he'll figure out a way to be very effective. Speaking of which, maybe you'll go watch Aaron Rodgers at Soldier Field up or up in Lambeau for Sunday Night Football in Week 2. Will you watch a Bears game in person? Will you go to a Bears game this season? Preseason counts. Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Will you go to a Bears game this season? And if you're going to and you already know which game you're going to go to or that you want to go to, let us know which team, uh, which matchup you're going to go to this year. Jake with the question, are you comfortable with our tight end room? If not, who do we sign? I honestly am. I, Cole Komet's going to be the starter. O'Shaughnessy and Ryan Griffin are good. Depth, backup types. Uh, you know, Jesper Horstead's gone, so that's a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, you know, maybe you get a fourth guy in there uh, to compete. I know they signed uh, Ryzen John, but, you know, we'll see what he turns out to be. Uh, I, I think your top three is good, though. Komet, Ryan Griffin, O'Shaughnessy, those two backups have started in this league before. So, yeah, I think you're in a good spot. Alan Mack, what would you offer for Chenault in the trade? I'd probably try to get him for a fifth. If they said no, maybe I'd go up to a fourth. I wouldn't go top three rounds, I don't think. Jags don't have a ton of leverage. They just signed multiple receivers. Um, fifth, fourth, you know, if I sent a third, I'd probably want a fourth back. Uh, something like that. You know, I think somewhere in that range makes sense. 
Justin Donahue, is Coleman even a possible starter, or do the rookies have a better chance? I don't view Coleman anything more than a body that can try to show something. He got cut by the Colts recently, so, uh, you know, started 16 games in 2017. If you missed, if you don't know who he's talking about, Sean Coleman, Bears signed him on Tuesday. Hadn't played in the NFL since 2017 due to injuries, COVID, uh, so I no expectations. If he gives you something, great. If not, I didn't expect anything in the first place. Appreciate all of your questions. If you want to ask me your questions verbally, like talk to me, like on a phone call, well, call in to me on call-in, chatsports.com slash Bears call-in. Hit that subscribe button once you get there, chatsports.com slash Bears call-in. We go live weekly uh, with your questions and the latest Bears news and rumors. All right, speaking of call-in, we're going to be going live here in just a couple of minutes. 4 o'clock central time, so we'll kind of shoot the shit here for a few. Uh, can't push it until 4 o'clock, so hang with us here. Uh, we're going to be putting the link in the live chat. Uh, there's a new link that we'll put in uh, to get us into uh, the live room, so appreciate you guys uh, for waiting with us. I encourage you guys to join us here on Colin because uh, we're having a lot of fun over there. I'll give you any, I'll give some shout-outs real quick to any new subscribers over there. Let's see. We got Alex is subscribed also. We're over 205 subs now, so we're going to be going live here in a couple of minutes. In the meantime, what is the Bears' bigger need? Wide receiver, offensive line. I'll get some shout-outs going here. Also, Quinn, can, Quinn asks, can Pettis be a weapon and does Daz get cut? Maybe on both. I think both will be fighting for a roster spot. I doubt Dante Pettis gives you a ton, but – he was good as a rookie in 2018. That was four years ago, though. Tyler Smith says offensive line. Neek says wide receiver. Robert says offensive line. Let's see here. Casey says we need chat now merch. You mean Bears now merch? I'll get on the uh, merch team and uh, we'll try to we'll try to make that happen. Producer Jack, can we uh, get some gear going? You in charge? He says is the head of merch, sure. So we'll uh, we'll figure that out. Wide receiver from Tyler, 2K Party says uh, wide receiver. Running back from Ron, running back. That's like near the bottom of the list. Michael says offensive line. Uh, so there you go. Those are a couple of needs. Ask you this one, should the Bears sign OBJ? I didn't see your answers earlier. Type Y for yes, type in for no. And then I'll push live on calling at about 3.59 central time, and then we'll get this thing going here. Why for yes, in for no. Should the Bears sign Odell Beckham? Tyler says yes. The Gabe says yes. Darnell says okay. Big no from me from 2K. Monty says no. Patrick says no. G Station says no. Marcus says offensive line for the last question. No from good. A lot of no's coming in, and I think, you know, I certainly understand where you guys are coming from on that one. All right, we're about to go live here on Colin. I'm going to pull it up here and uh, start it here in just a second. If you want to know what the Colin app is, it's your chance to call in and talk about the Bears with me. Your questions, my answers, we can have a conversation. Uh, I think it's like our live mailbags, but it's better because I can hear from you guys specifically. It's like calling into a sports radio station. So we're going to get things started here. Let me pull it up on the app. Going live here. Boom, just hit start. So here we go, live on Colin. We are now live on Colin officially. We will get the new link in the live chat for you guys. So Go ahead and join us over there. If you're hopping in on Colin right now, we're still live on YouTube for a couple more minutes. We'll let some people get over here. We'll take a couple of calls uh, so the folks on YouTube can kind of take in the experience and understand what it's all about. And then uh, we will get this thing going here. So give me just a second, and uh, we will be uh, we'll be going here. Appreciate uh, 2K already in the chat. Nate, Joey, Brett, Anthony. Uh, Larnett, Corey, Jimmy is in here as well. Uh, got my guy Marshall Green uh, putting the, the, the new link in the YouTube live chat for anyone still watching over there. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a call here. So, Jack, do whatever you need to do audio-wise, and uh, we'll do a test call for those still listening and watching on YouTube. That way you can take in the experience. So 
2K, you are up on Colin. Go ahead and hit that uh, mic button in the bottom right to unmute yourself and uh, ask me your question. Go ahead, 2K. Yo, what's going on, Harrison? It's nice to actually be able to talk to you, man. I know. What's good, man? That's what's cool about Colin. Shoo. Um, my question for you, one, I, I want to know your view or your perspective. I, you might have went over it in the video, but I got on it real late. But uh, what's your view on our most recent offensive lineman signing, uh, that offensive tackle? And then um, my buddy Josh Black. All the way back from high school, he, he played for Syracuse and came Bears camp. I don't know if you've seen him. I don't know it, but I was curious on your thoughts of him too. What was the name of that second guy? Joshua Black or Josh Black? Josh Black. I don't from Syracuse. Okay, I see him here looking at the looking at the stats. Is he a, is he a UDFA or is he a guy in next year's draft? He's a UDFA. He, okay. uh, he had one just, and a half sacks just, last year. It looks like. Two six three two ninety. I'll be honest. I don't know much about him. You'd probably know more than me. I didn't study him or anything like that. Has he been picked up or is he still a free agent? Um, I know that he. Well, right now he's at uh Saints training camp because he was just at the Bears training camp, but he did both. So I'm I'm assuming he's just. He might have been going. on the Bears tryout list, but didn't get a contract, so that can make sense. Right. Um. Yeah. yeah. If he didn't get a contract, I'm guessing the Bears weren't super. Uh, interested. Uh, remind me the first part of the question. I can address that as well. Um, the offensive lineman signing we just uh, – Oh, we Sean – yeah, yeah, we talked – Sean Coleman. I, I remember his name. When they first signed him, I was like, I know that name. He started 16 games for the Browns in 2017, uh, but he has not played in a game since uh, due to injuries. He opted out in 2020 because of COVID. Uh, so, depth body, the Colts cut him last week. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't really have major expectations for him whatsoever, to be honest. I, you know, they'll let him compete, of course, but I'd be surprised if he made the team, honestly. Yeah, it's, it seems like we're just getting a lot of depth bodies. Yeah. It doesn't seem like we're – doesn't seem like he's aiming too much for uh, getting anybody he feels uh, convicted about actually – keeping on the roster. Well, I, you know? I think what they're doing is they're going to let some of these rookies compete, and I appreciate the call, uh, 2K. They're going to let some of these rookies compete, and if they feel like they need to add a proven starter, I think they will. We'll see what happens still four months before the season, over two months until training camp. Uh, so uh, keep those things in mind as well. We appreciate the call from 2K. If you're still on YouTube, come join us right now. We are live. Uh, li a link is in the live chat. If you want to call in to me, this is your opportunity to do so. So I'm going to give you guys about 30 seconds, and then we're going to be exclusively live on call -in. So my guy, Marshall Green, he's peppering the live chat uh, with the link here. And uh, we're going to be live exclusively on Colin for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. So 20 seconds, and then we're going to kill this on YouTube and on Rumble. Come join us on Colin right now. Appreciate you guys uh, for waiting on Colin. We're about to get to your calls, and then uh, we'll get this party started. All right, let's sign off here on YouTube. Uh, for everyone on YouTube and Rumble, appreciate you guys for still watching with us. We're going to be exclusively live here on Colin for the next 30 minutes, so go ahead and join us over there. Chatsports.com slash Bears